bought the farm in 2000, um, researched the idea of a vineyard for about three years, and in 2004 we planted the first vineyards. Um, we planted five uh, noble varieties, Sauvignon, Chardonnay, Viognier, Syrah and Cabernet. Um, made our first wine in 2007, which made history. It was the first certified estate wine to ever come out of KZN. Um, and we continue to make history. We've made 32 certified estate wines. Estate wines mean that, that they are grapes grown, made here on the property. We don't bring in any other grapes or any other grape juice. Um, so they are very much a KZN wine. Send me in the White wine making, you make white wine off the skins. You don't want tannin, you don't want anthocyanins to, to, to get through the wine, otherwise you get too much colour and too much tannin. We then take the skins, put them into this, and we put pieces of wood on top, there's, there's pieces which fit, and we press. This is a basket press. This is the most old-fashioned way of pressing wine. Yeah, the wine stays in these for about a year. Then we, we fine it, we put in bentonite, which is clay, some desiccated fish bladder, and what that does, it strips the protein out of it so you don't get any cloudiness. We then pump it out a year later through a filter system, where we stir our filter it, and the bacteria gets through, back into a stainless steel tank, stabilize it again with a drop in temperature, and then bottle it. Probably one of the hardest parts of the whole the whole process, um, because there is such a glut of wine, particularly in the Cape. Um, there's a huge amount of wine out in the market, and 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 Cape winemakers are finding it harder and harder to 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 sell wine because of the the, the competition. Being a, being a franchise, uh, each decision rests with the owner. Um, so ultimately, the reps or the owners of the smaller wineries would have to trek out to the different stores, see the different uh, managers uh, of those various companies and uh, try and persuade them to buy their product. So we're in a very fortunate position as we sell everything from the farm. We have the tasting room, we have the restaurant, we sell all our wine from the estate. We don't, we don't have our wine short of Neander Fine Wines who is our sort of shop on the meander that we use because we don't open during the week. In our business not many uh, smaller wineries exist. We um, sell out, we sell out every year. You'll never find a vintage uh, a wine older than a year old. Last year's Viognier sold out in five days. Um, this one is down close. A lot of consumers don't really know about wine. So any um, effort placed by the various companies to educate the consumer always goes down well. And we find sales uh, sometimes three times higher on activations, demonstrations of products uh, and things like that. It's by having to come to the estate and, and buy our wines here, everyone meets us. So everyone that drinks our wine has met us and they know our story and so there's a personal attachment. Um, it's not just a bottle on a shelf. Um, and and we, we find that really works as we release a new, a new vintage. We put an email out there to our, our mailing list and, and people go, well, of course we want the next one, next vintage. So you know, immediately there's five cases here, five, ten cases there because of that personal, um, a, a personal relationship we have with our, with our clients, which is also very, very useful. So we're lucky that everyone that drinks our wine has actually met us and knows us and, and, and supports Abingdon for, the, for who we are and not that we're just a wine on a shelf.
so unnatural Peter Gabriel Mark Kent, he's a winemaker down in the Western Cape, had a lovely saying a couple of years ago. He was questioned by a journalist. He said, there's no money in wine, but it's a fine way to be poor. And that is, that's what it's all about. It's, it's having a passion and enjoying it. To see the dark.